Hey guys, today we are going to talk about how to set the colors in your vintage fabrics. Um, a lot of times this is really important, all times I would say, it's really important, especially for quilt tops that haven't been quilted yet, that might potentially run. So I bought this amazing quilt top that I'm going to actually have quilted uh, for my own bed, but and I'll show you that in a minute, but it doesn't have any stains. It's nice and clean. It's like a new old stock. And so um, that's kind of where I usually start. So then what you're going to do is you're going to run your tub of water. Don't do it in a bathtub because you'll never be able to get it hot enough and you don't need that much water for like a quilt top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my water and then I'm trying to get this up. It's got to be, it's got to be up to, um, what you call it? It's got to be up to 140 degrees. So right now, um, I'm actually at 122. So I ran the water till it got hot. Then I stopped it up, ran it uh, mostly full, and I'm adding buckets, basically of boiled water, pots of boiled water, until I get it up to 140 degrees. Then I'm going to use my retain. Here you go. Link is in my group. You can get it on Amazon. But it's one uh, teaspoon per yard of fabric so my quilt top is roughly 82 by 92 so when you do the math that's about six that's five point something i don't know yards so i'm gonna round i always round up so it's about six yards of fabric so i'm gonna use six teaspoons um most of the time i tend to go uh safer than sorry so i usually add an extra teaspoon so what i'm gonna do is get my water up to temp and then i'm gonna add uh, rather than add six, I'm gonna go ahead and do seven teaspoons of retain, and then I will show you the process. And so what just you do. added another pot of boiling water, and so what we have right now, uh, finally up to 131, almost to 140. So I think one more pot of water and a kettle should do it, and we will get started. These are really great. Um, I, I use this all the time. I like it because it's a magnet, so it'll actually, uh, my side table is a magnetic table. It'll just magnet in place, but um, it's a great thermometer. Um, you just need something like this when you're doing any kind of digital temperature thermometer will work. Um, again, I love the fact that I'm in my LK sink because it's metal, so it's gonna hold that temperature. It's really hard to get it up to 140 degrees quickly and keep it there. And so um, by having um, a metal sink really works well. You don't want too much water because then it's um, really hard. You can use a bucket. You could use like a some kind of like a plastic bucket, but again, it won't keep the temperature while you're trying to get it up to temp and won't keep it hot as long. So we will return in just a minute and I'll show you how to do this. As you can see, my water is steaming. I've got it up just now to 140. So I already put my retain in there. Um, I did a little bit extra and then I always kind of, cause all of this y'all, it's so counterintuitive. I just, too much is not gonna hurt you, but too little will. And so I just dump a little bit more, especially if it's a big piece of material. Cause the instructions for this guy says, um, one teaspoon of retain for each yard of fabric, add dry fabric and stir regularly for 20 minutes. Use cold water rinse, but use water to cover fabric. That is really vague of how much like proportions. So this is a really big top. And so for it to move freely, I needed a really a sink full. So that's what I did. I added extra, won't hurt it. This is always, I, as many times as I've done this, I'm not, ooh, ooh. I'm not going over my camera. I'm not going to lie. It still makes me anxious because I'm going, it's so counterintuitive, y'all, to put something that has any reds or might potentially bleed into this hot of water. That is the reason we have the retain. So here we go. Oh my gosh. So here we go. Look at my pretty top. Dresden and plate. A lot of pinks and reds and just a recipe for bleed so what i'm gonna do i use a metal spoon I use a slotted spoon because you can then stir it and it doesn't get there's no drag and get hung up so i'm gonna put my top just gonna mush it down in there but you need enough for it to move freely if you will that's the instructions now in order to move freely that's a lot of material so i needed as you can see i needed a sink full for this to be able to quote, move freely. You don't want it bunched up on top of itself. 
And especially if you're doing this, you can you can use retain for a quilt. It's just going to take a lot, okay? Because you got to calculate how many yards of material. Here's how you do a quilt, okay? You're going to thanks, that's hot. You're going to calculate the um material, the amount of fabric for the top. You need to then calculate the amount of fabric and yardage of the backing. Add those together plus how big is that? Because you also have the batting. That counts as material yardage. So it takes a lot, but you can do the same method for a quilt. I would highly recommend that for a quilt with like a red and white. Okay, you just have to be sure to cal do your math, calculate enough material yardage because you've got the top, not just. Because um, I've had some people message me and they're like, I don't know what I did wrong, whatever. I just calculated, they just measured the quilt in feet or inches. And then calculated how many, you know, square yards that was and then did it. Well, you've got a top, you've got batting, and you've got the backing. So those are three separate measurements. They might all be the same amount in yards, but you got to add them together. So it might take you a lot of retain to do that. But it is possible. I have a red and white that was a big leader that I just loved that I actually um, set the colors um, the other thing is, okay, so what you'll do is you'll kind of stir it and I'll just leave it and I'm going to um, set my little timer for 20 minutes and then I'm going to do um, fill this up with cool, cold water and rinse and that's it and then dry immediately. So I will, with this guy, I'm going to actually tumble dry in my dryer after I mush the water out just like I did in the um, quilt video. Um, after I rinse it, I'll smush all the water out. I will then put it in my spin cycle for just a minute on the high spin, um, just like I told you guys about, to get the rest of the water out because you you want it to dry so that the retain can do its thing, okay? Um, after that, here's the, here's the thing. Going forward, once this is quilted, if I ever have to wash my quilt or soak it, you're gonna do it in cool, cold water, maybe lukewarm. Do not use hot water. It will, the retain will, tend to lessen over time if you try to wash it in like hot water. So never, never, once the colors are set, don't use hot water again, okay? Um, because you don't want to have an issue. So as you can see, my water is clear. Actually, actually it's a little bit um, dingy and you know, all, all that is is just probably from this fee. Um, this is a, just a muslin backing and so it's just the it's just the dirt because I didn't. This was I didn't wash it or do anything. It was it was pretty clean. So it's just the dirt soaking out because it's hot water. But um, it's in dust. But it, it's not much. It's definitely not color run. So I will come back in twenty minutes and I will rinse with cold water, mush, spin dry, and draw on an air dry or a um, probably the air dry cycle is what I'm gonna dry it on. And so it'll be moving around and it will be good to go. Then I will press it and get it quilted. So that is how you set the colors in your vintage fabrics or quilt tops or even quilts.